we are back last time we we're able to set up messages so if you look at how we are going we have set up messages we have handled the toggle in password input so now we are going to go ahead and register a user so right now i'm going to go in my views.py right here and we need to work on this view setup to to register a user so if you look at our our html template which is here by the way if you're new if this is if this is your first video i recommend you go you go back and check out the videos prior to this one because they are the ones that lead to this one if you want to get more general idea about what we are building so you can see that the action is going to registration url and then the method is going to be post meaning we need to handle it in our po in our post request in our views.py right here we need to first of all we're going to need to get the data so let me highlight the steps so get user data okay then we are going to do one thing by date then of course we are going to create a user account okay. so this is what we are going to do for now so to get the user data now that we are on a form we can we can get this data in in post so i'm going to say post data equals request dot post actually should be capsule so dot post okay so right here right here we can now go ahead and pick out the values but what i wanted to do is just get the values themselves so username is going to be request post username like that so i'm going to repeat this for the email and the password so that will guarantee that we have them so i need to rename this email then password okay so once we have that now we need to mm -hmm, you guessed it second one is to validate so how do we validate this okay so previously we set up some async validations to make sure that the username is is not in use and the email is not in use but we quite didn't enforce we quite didn't enforce like preventing a user to submit the form so what i'm going to do real quick is make sure that the user can submit the form so right now i'm going to make this view keep working by adding a render so here in in our views.py actually in our in our template we need to look out for the submit button so the submit button here we, we need to give it a class of i'm going to call it submit btn so this submit btn we are going to disable it when a user has an error so right here in in our in our register.js we are going to set up a, a variable for the button so this is going to be document query selector so we are going to select by class submit btn so right here we want to say we want to say that each time there is an error in the email we want to disable that button so we can disable it by by doing submit button then we need to to add an attribute so we can say actually i think we can even say add attribute so add okay set attribute i believe set attribute and then you see text in it takes in like key and value so now here we can do disabled okay so the value here we can need the string so we can pass disabled so this is just going to add to it attributes we can do this but i think at the same time we can do submit button dot disabled equals true like that so once you do that then now of course we want to make sure that when there is no error so here in else we can like remove it so we can do remove attribute this one is going to be disabled okay so there is there's going to be need to handle it within the, the username too so we can do that although it's it's right here so when there is an error we also want to to disable it so add attributes so i'm just going to use the other syntax of disabled because true so we need to remove it when there is no there is no error still 
okay so that we can do using this one the dis remove attribute disabled so this is in the if so in the else you can do that that should remove it but to, for us to check now if we come back to the app and reload let's say we put a name then with this you can see that now we can't click it we can't no matter what we do so for the email still the same thing even if so even if this is correct then this is not then it's going to be disabled but we need a way to actually keep in sync with both of those two i will leave that task to you guys you let me know in the comments if, if you need help with that but i feel like it's, it's it's a good challenge that you can take on to make sure both of them are validated so going back to the view going back to the view here now we assume that we have the values so i'm also going to do some i'm also going to do some more validations here so basically although i want to be sending messages so here i'm going to check if not user objects dot filter so username equals username dot exists okay so want to want to work when the username is is provided then also i also want to check that the email is, is also not taken from here so once that's done then we can now check the password length so, so last time we set up messaging now we are going to check this password length so if, if the password length is not like equal to equal or greater than six we can tell them that the password needs to be more strong so we can do if then so we do a lane on password password so if lane on password is less uh, less than six then we need to do messages dot you guessed it error then you can pass in the request because that's what it takes in first then you tell them password too short okay so once you do this then of course you need to render out the the view again so we can now re-render it here okay so have it so now this means that if the password is 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 greater than, is greater or equal to six then we need to to like save the user in our db so to save the user we basically need to use the user model so we need to do user with objects you need to do create user so create user you can see it takes in a username and an email which is an email which is uh, optional and then a password so to pass in the username i'm going to use like named keywords here so na username equals the username email equals the email because the email that you already have okay so the password can actually be null i'm going to show you a way we can set it so here you can do you can save this to a user so when a user is created we can save to a user instance so here we can do user then we can do set underscore password and then pass in the password that we already have okay so once we have that we need to save of course so user dot save okay so once this is done now we can tell you that your account has been created so for us to create for us to tell a user of course we need to give them a success message which we can do here so we return okay so we return success so this is going to be account successfully created okay so that should tell them so let's test it out and see if we have some other things to fix so i'm going to reload it and we are back but now when i type the name let's say i have that one it's correct then the email let's say gmail.com okay and then i pass password or pass and then I try to register. You see, we get password to shot, which is what we want. So if you enter something that's less, it's disabled. 
then you can't click it so you need a valid email dot call is fine password too short so when, so now let's try using using a password that is using a password that is like longer than six so password that should be longer if i submit you can see that we get account successfully created but we have some problems here one of them is the message is in not in success so we need to change it so this should be success you guys probably noticed it then uh, something else we need to do is see if we can keep the values in the fields when we get an error like for the for the like for the password so to, to keep the values we are i'm going to set up the context variable here so i'm going to do i'm going to do context so context is going to be a dictionary it's going to contain like field values and then they are going to equal to request.post so it's going to contain everything that has been posted in the previous request okay so now when we pass this in in here here we can pass another third parameter which can be the data option so we call it context here so you can pass context equals actually actually you can pass context it should be fine so same thing we are going to need to pass it here when there is an error and also let's see password too short actually yeah that's the only part but if you wanted to do it for something else this is how you do it you pass it pass it in request.post then now when we go to our template we should get access to this so in our templates in our register template here on the email we want to set the value of this to equal to we want to set it to equal to field values dot email so we'll do the same thing for the username I'm going to copy this bring it down to up here so this is going to be for the username okay so save it so let's see if this is working here so i'm going to reload the page type user type a good email type a shorter password submit and then you see we get the, the the errors but then our data is kept so this is what i wanted to show you if, if you ever wanted to do that keep the values this is an approach that you can take which I think you're going to always adapt as it's, 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 it's always good to have. Okay, so now we need to verify that the account was actually created. So here, I'm going to go in my, my Django shell. So I'm going to the Django shell. So to get it, you do Python manage py shell. And now you can like write any code you write in, in an editor. So here I'm going to import the user model. So from Django dot contrib dot both dot models import you guessed it user so now i'm going to query for all the users that we have so user so i'm going to say users equals user dot objects dot all so that returns for me all the users it'd be user cut to you okay so now if i do users so you will see that I have one user here. So now let's try creating another user. I stopped my server. So I'm going to open up another another terminal window. So this is going to bring in my, my virtual environment. If I see where I am, I need to seed into this folder. Okay, so now I can run Python, manage.py, run server. Okay, so there is an issue. I think I need to reactivate my virtual environment. Let's see. Pip and share. So that should activate it. So if you run Python. Okay, so now we are running. So we are going to be looking at this window here. So now if we come in here and set another name, let's say German, then let's say German at test.com. Then put a password like pass as short. See, we get short, and then we can put a real one password. Then register. You can see that the account is successfully created, and we get the, the green, which is good. And we clear out all this stuff. So now we're going to check if that user was created. 
So I'm going to make another query and looking at the users now, you see we have two people, one is German, which is good. So I'm going to show you how you can query for by, by the, the username or any other field. So if you wanted to get only German, you can do like user equals user dot objects. You can do get if you're sure. So you can do get by username equals, since usernames are strings, you can put German there. So once you run that, you're going to, to check now user, and then you see you have German. So you can check all the attributes of German. So one of them will be user.username. See, we get a string German. Let's check if the email got saved. See, we get the email. Let's check for the password. You see, the password is hashed, which is good. So now I'm going to, to show you how to make sure they can't log in before they are verified. So you see, if we do, it is active. The account is already active, but we would not want that. Sometimes you're going to need to have functionality for to have users verify their emails. So I'm going to show you that one next. So that said, I'm going to be stopping here for now. If you enjoyed the video, please give it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.